Hello and welcome to my Let's Play of Mutant Mods Deluxe. Let's uh, get right into this action and experience some Mutant Mods on the Wii U. The wonderful intro, hanging out in the home. I'll notice uh, Max has a can of Dr. Pepper behind him. Obviously they're both playing the 3DS. Probably playing some ATV Wild Ride, I expect. <laughs> Um, yeah, meteorite hits, mighty invasion, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Okay, and here we are, we're off. So, uh, that little bird, love that little guy, is the only time, uh, it is the only time he appears in the game, well, apart from on the uh, title screen, but, um, you know, yeah, he adds a lot, I like him, he kind of adds a lot of sense of, um, I guess, uh, depth to the world in a very simple, um, kind of elegant way. I like that guy. Hey, Max. Um, all right, so first off, this uh, sign here, obviously it says jump. Um, on the 3DS version, it had a, had a, a white B button, and on the uh, PC and the Wii U version, it has jump, and the iOS version has like a black A button, so it's different for every version, obviously depending on what you're using to play it. There's some simple jumps. Well, actually, that, I mean, it goes from a very simple jump here with no risk to death. <laughs> death below you. Slightly higher jump, much bigger jump with death below you. So it, pretty much straight away it's not really messing around. And then uh, maximum height jump there. It's five, eight pixels high. I don't know the weird way of saying it, but you know, this, this is all made up of eight by eights up here. And there's five of them stacked on top of each other to make that height. And this is the first time you're required to use the hover to get across the gap, or well, you can't make it. So you have to learn how to do this to proceed. This is a way to kind of introduce you to the fact that you can jump up through platforms. You might kind of try not to, but it's easier to try that than to try and jump around it. And obviously some people might just kind of do that and not realize they can jump through it, but there's a chance that they'll accidentally discover you can jump through that, which is kind of nice. And if they did fail to do it there, then they're required to do it here. <laughs> you can't get past this without going through it, so it's kind of nice. I really like this section, you know, where you get to see the stuff in the background, and then before you know it, you're in the background, and you're like, oh, that's cool. Um, I remember the first time that uh, we got it set up uh, on the original 3DS version, um, and we jumped into the background and it was like, man, that was so cool. <laughs> and obviously, you know, um, the idea is lifted from the Virtual Boy uh, Wario Land, so it's not an original idea, but I've played it before, but doing it uh, ourselves with our own game and obviously in full color and all the rest of it just made it different, you know, it just felt really awesome. Um, this door here is a lot more easier to see on uh, the Wii U version of the game than it was on the 3DS version um, due to the increased view area, uh, which results in some people going into that door before finishing this level, which is interesting. That never really happened on the 3DS version, but on this version it does, which uh, is interesting. All right, this level one, done. Woo, yeah! Go to level two. I noticed in the foreground the uh, little diamond there because I got all 100 golden diamonds in this level. It showed up in that one down below. So I want to get all four of these. That door we're we ready to unlock once all levels and all golden diamonds have been collected. Something I kind of like about the way this game worked out is it's kind of deceptively. Um, large as far as how many levels are in the game. When you first come to it, you're like, oh, there's just like 16 doors there. And some people don't even notice there's another four in the foreground. Um, you know what, I'm going to get these while I'm here. Um, so you think, oh, maybe there's just 16 levels, or maybe 20 levels in the whole game. And you're like, oh, that's cool. This is, you know, just a small platform where I'll jump into that, knock it out, sweet. Um, and then, fairly quickly, you realize, okay, well, the difficulty is pretty high, I guess, so it may take a little bit longer. And then you notice there are these doors in the background that have levels in the like, oh, okay. And at this point, you know, with the Wii U version, there are 20 regular, 20 secret, uh, 20 granny, 
and now 20 ghost levels. So I mean, 80 levels in this game, which is kind of crazy, but it starts off with this weird perception where there were just 16, which is kind of neat. I kind of like that, that sense of discovery um, and, and change, and the way the player is required to get to those levels is different, you know, using the power-ups or going through the ghost door or using granny or whatever. Um, you have to use your knowledge and skill to, uh, to do it, which I think is nice. Yeah. So I love the blur effect in the Wii U version. I think it looked really nice. Uh, I love the foreground background blurry action. Um, these platforms here uh, the disappearing platforms a lot of people hate. You know what's funny is you don't actually have to do it, you can just uh, float across these. You don't actually have to um, stand, not stand on these at this point. A lot of people die there and you don't have to. You can just do that if you want to. Um, but it's interesting that you think you should do that, you know? So you do. But if they weren't there, you'd assume that you could jump across that gap and you would. It's funny that. Alright. Yeah, get some of that action. If you have the extended, oh, that's quite extended hover, of course. You can get across that gap there, which at this point in the game you wouldn't have that. But later on, if you came back for some reason, you'd be able to do that. And then there's Jiding. Level 2, done and done. So each Let's Play session of, of this, it's funny it's Let's Play because it's, you know, we made it and stuff, then we're doing our own Let's Play. That's silly and fun. I like it. All right, uh, I'm gonna do probably just four levels per play session because I'm waffling so much. They may take a while, so I think four per session is probably a good idea, so you don't get bored to tears. And if you want to watch the next one, you can. If you don't, I understand. No worries. It's all good. This is actually one of my favourite um, levels. Uh, because it's just, I, I like that it's just one screen wide, it's all vertical, uh, it's a little different for a traditional platformer, generally speaking, kind of. Um, and I like the depths, the different depths required in this uh, in this level, it's kind of like a little maze in a way. And I guess, and the cool thing is, you know, you can jump in the foreground there if you want to, you know, you can jump in the background here, and you don't really, you can, it's up to you, you can do either one. And you don't really ever, uh, really, <laughs> I just missed that one up there. You don't really ever screw yourself. I mean, you can always come back and, and go the other way. But it, it's interesting, you know, and people complete the level different ways or approach it differently. And I really like that. I love it. Look at this. I mean, I love that. Hanging out in the foreground. There's the middle ground there with the, the uh, vertical uh, column of uh, golden diamonds. And in the far background, you've got even further. I love how blurry that is. I mean, it just looks so neat. I love that. And it comes into focus as you get closer. I just love that. It's such a neat effect. I appreciate it. I think it's fun. Alright, so. And. Get rid of these guys. Mm -hmm. and obviously, these levels are pretty, pretty easy. Um, just introducing the player to what it's all about. I kind of like these little platforms here. So the, the, the thinking behind these platforms, obviously you can jump up through them, is the difference between what I'm standing on here and these. Um, what I'm standing on here, the green is like a 16 by 16 you know, block. It's a thicker, visually thicker looking platform as far as the green area. And this is a thinner platform which matches the, uh, the gray platforms there in the background that you can jump through. So that's kind of the, the thinking there. I don't know how well that subconsciously communicates to your brain that that's the case, but that's the thinking <laughs> behind it. And they are thinner, therefore you can jump up through them. Yeah, that makes sense, right? And obviously it's the same here. These are thinner, so you can jump up through them. I kind of like how these doors open up as you progress. Obviously all the numbers on the door represent how many water sprites you have to collect to unlock that door. And I kind of like at the beginning there, you know, after completing a couple, you can actually go to the, the next world um, before finishing off the first one. I like stuff like that. So if you want to, if you're a completionist, a perfectionist, you can just do it in order. If you're, you know, someone, an explorer and wants to see what's ahead, you can jump into the next world. And it's nice, you know, you get a sense of freedom. It's not just linear 
one, two, three, four. It's kind of up to you how you want to approach it. Right. So the uh, the distribution of enemies and uh, even devices and just everything that you interact with, even down to the jump heights and uh, and stuff like that, uh, required. Um, yeah, because everything you do is a challenge, so, like, the, uh, um, you know, if you're required to do, well, there aren't really any examples of it in this level, but, in this level, but later on, there are situations where you have to jump up, do a maximum jump, and then hover across to something to land on it, and if you don't, you just simply will miss it. Anyway, so those sort of things are not required at this stage, um, but in later levels they are. But, uh, anyway, what I was going to say, though, is how the enemies introduced, and even down to the jumps, or the devices or hazards or whatever you want to call them. Um, I had this big kind of Excel spreadsheet, really exciting stuff, <laughs> um, on where they were going to be introduced per level um, and, and stuff like that. So really, um, so I could um, kind of keep track of where things were and try and make some sense of it, you know. And that was kind of my little bible there. I kind of really uh, looked at that every time I made a level. So if I wanted to make a level in the snow world, for example, or whatever, I could look at that sheet and go, okay, well, what what have I determined would be good to have in this kind of part of the game uh, based on uh, not only difficulty, but also just variety, you know? So the player uh, has something uh, interesting going on each time, each level as they progress. Boom. All right, there's that one. So that is that. I'm not sure how long we've been recorded. Actually, not too long. You know what? I want to jump in to do the ghost world version of those four. We'll give that a shot. Now, uh, disclaimer, I will not be collecting all of the golden uh, diamonds in the ghost world because that would take too long and I don't need to to complete the game. They are bonus. <laughs> Total cop out. Um, but anyway, there you go. Because they're actually specifically pretty darn hard actually in this world because they are just bonus. You don't have to collect them. They're just a way of getting more sooner. So straight away, what I like about this world is you've got the spinning sign here, which is neat. Just shows a little bit of mischief. Obviously, you've got a cobweb going on over there. The sh planes are shifting up and down. This is somewhat... Well, the very beginning is exactly the same as level one. But then beyond that, it's completely different. Um, and I just love... I don't know, it's so simple, but I just love that. It really gives a sense of this world has some strange stuff going on. Because um, it's so different than uh, the regular worlds, you know. And maybe you'll notice that they're a little tricky. You know, some big jumps being required here that you have to hover across, or you will die. Um, and obviously, you cannot shoot these guys. So all the signs obviously are spinning, which I think is pretty cool. Kind of like that. And this is death if you do not cross this properly. Uh, you'll notice. You might notice in an old version of the game if someone caught video of it. The number of uh, golden diamonds here is one less than they used to be because you couldn't run across this in one go and collect all of them originally. There's always one left, so you have to wait to go back down again and come back up again. And that, I left it in there for the longest time until it finally just bugged me enough where I'm like, you know what, that's just lazy and silly. You need to get rid of one so then the player feels good about getting across that gap, collecting them all and moving on. Just waiting and going up and down again, collect one. Um, wow, really? One golden diamond? It's just, that's just silly, you know? That doesn't fit. It's not fun, it kind of kills the flow, and there's no need for it. So I went back and I deleted it and I moved it somewhere else. I don't know where, but I put it somewhere else. I can't remember where now. But I did. But anyway, so that's the kind of stuff I try to think of while we're making the levels um, to kind of keep the flow going, you know? And I know it's not perfect, but I try and make it flow as much as I can uh, when I think of it. <laughs> so, yeah. These guys are new. It's a new. Uh, the ditzy drop because they're just kind of ditzy and they drop. Very imaginative, imaginative naming there. Um, I love how the ghosts go through you there and you can totally see yourself. You can see them. They're kind of blurry in the foreground. I love that. It's so bizarre and neat. It works really well. Um, Perfect. Boom. Shitting. So the beginning and the end of each ghost level is identical to its counterpart in the normal world, but the spaces in between are different. I mean, there may be some highlights of the original normal world level that are 
uh, also in the ghost one just because they were neat and I wanted to play on expectations or the theme of the idea. Wow, I completely failed just then, didn't I? I got hit twice by the same enemy in a row. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here's the uh, ghost shot. Boom, kill him. And mom, 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 mom. comes back. Pretty cool. Now I've got one hit point left before I die. Let's see if I can get to the end without that happening. Yup, this is going to be interesting. No, 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 wow! Oh, fear. All right, well, there you go. I'll keep on rolling. Rolling with it, rolling with it. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're doing this real time. We're experiencing it as it's happening. I'm going to make this happen much more swift as it should have been now. There we go. That's how it should be done. That's Mr. Lazy Pants there before. Didn't get it done. Alright, now we're taking care of business. So all of the enemies take the same number of hits as they normally do with ghost shots. Um, but obviously they come back after a short time, so you have to be kind of careful with what you do with your ammo. Um, yeah, I have to duck there, otherwise it doesn't end well. Oh yeah, there we go. Alright. This section is similar, I think, to the original normal world. As far as dropping through, but obviously the moving, the moving land masses is different. Yeah, this is similar right here, but then it kind of changes. Sometimes you can just shoot them for fun, even though it's a complete waste of bullet, and watch them come back. Like here is different. This crusher wasn't here before. And the position of actually in this one, yeah, I changed the position of where the water sprite is for no good reason. I just thought that'd be fun. Change it up. Boing. Alright. Okay. So six down, two more to go. So this is obviously quite different than the, it's a play on the beginning of the other normal world counterpart. Everyone's favourite uh, eye shot enemy. A lot of people don't like those guys. <laughs> they are a little annoying, I guess. Alright. Oh, really? Okay. I was about to say this requires some tricky timing, which I didn't have at that time. Yep. Oh, wow, I'm just completely failing all over the place. That's okay. Oh, did I do it? Yes, I did. Now, this is really tricky, and I'm probably going to fail miserably, because apparently my timing is not with me tonight. Not with me at all. And then you do that, and oh my gosh. Yeah, wow, okay. That maze actually did that. And this can get very tricky, especially if you're trying to get all of the uh, what, uh, golden diamonds, because, yeah, because you're required to do some fancy footwork to try and get them. Alright, okay. And uh, you still have to do some ooh, craziness to get these ones. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Did I get the checkpoint at least? <laughs> I didn't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, in your face. I deserve that. That's ridiculous. Okay. Wow. Okay, this uh, Let's Play is extended into a, uh, a boring, long, sad view of me failing at my own game. But that's okay. It's okay. That's... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright then. Well, you know, that's cool. Just keep it real. Keep it real. You know how it is. Yeah. Alright, let's see if we can actually do this properly without making a pig's ear of it. Why is that a term, anyway? A pig's ear? I guess because pig's ear are kind of screwed up, maybe? They're kind of all squishy? I don't know. A pig's ear of it? Nothing wrong with pig's ears. Pig's ears are just fine. I guess some people even eat pig's ears, and that's just weird. Pigs hoofs, hoofs, whatever you want to call them. Strange. And there's a pork pop enemy in this game as well. Yeah. So there's that connection. It's pretty wow. That's all close. 
I really love how bright and cheery and colourful the uh, the golden diamonds are in these levels because they really stand out from the kind of drab blue kind of tones <clears throat> used for the levels. You know what? I'm not going to get all the golden diamonds. I'm going to get through this level. Sorry. Total sellout, cop out, whatever. Yeah. That's the beauty of this game. You don't have to do that. You can come back and get them later. You know? The options. It's to suit your lifestyle and your let's play. <laughs> Alright, this is a little tricky. I want to kind of go. Oh my gosh, right there. Really? That wasn't necessary. Wasn't necessary at all. Okay. Jeepers. Really? Jeepers? Now, what's cool here is you can actually go over this guy. Alright. Okay. Let me go back over here. And. Stink. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. Thanks for staying with me on that one. Alright, one more. Okay, so if you move fast on this, you can boom, right, go right in there. But if you wait, the timing of those things gets a bit crazy and you have to wait a little while. So you want to move pretty fast. I kind of try to do that with a lot of levels, where if you just bolt straight away, you'd be pretty good with the timing. Not like through the whole level necessarily, but at least through a little mini section at the beginning. Not always that, but sometimes. This is particularly quite tricky if you want to. Uh, yeah, do that. Tricky stuff right there. I don't know why I'm getting all of these. I don't know, I just, just kind of like collecting them, I guess. I'm not going to get all of them. I'm just going to move through this. This is a let's play, not a let's complete, complete, complete. Well, I will try and complete the whole game, but like I say, the golden diamonds of these levels are just bonus. Um, I did actually debate whether we should add them or not, and I like the extra challenge they present, if you want to try and collect them. Um, so, we decided to go ahead and do it. And if you want to beat these levels, and use these levels to try and get golden diamonds sooner than you would otherwise, you knock yourself out. That's great. It'd be a weird way of doing it, because these are much harder to get than the other ones, but uh, can if you want to. Oh, really? What am I doing? The guy came back already. Mad. He's just sitting us right there. Not that you have to shoot him, really. Well, yes, you did. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Oh, Alright, see? He bashed through this one all over it. Giboosh. Alright, cool. Alright, well, there's the first. Eight levels, you know, first four uh, regular, first four uh, ghosts. And the next one, we'll do the next world. Um, cool. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in, and <laughs> I'll see you next time. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.